This is a horror game podcast. It is meant for mature audiences. It may contain shocking revelations, violence, and sexual themes. Viewer discretion is advised. Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I are playing the Sad Robots RPG. I'm your host, Tom Rayley. Uh, this will be our third play test of Sad Robots by Morgan Llewellyn, and my first time as The Root. I am a bit of an astronomy nerd, and I wanted to see if some of my ideas would fit into the system. I have entitled this scenario, All in a Day's Work. So, without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. It is the year 2724. Human technology cannot exceed the speed of light, so travel is comparatively slow. Still, many things have been explored and colonized in a bubble about 17 light years in radius from Earth. The real problem, though, isn't so much the speed, but that a human body can endure uh, less acceleration. Uh, robots can endure a much higher level. Uh, their bodies are structurally much more sound. About 20 years ago, a group of robots, uh, synthetics, uh, were shot out of an astral cannon at around 240 Gs, and they were launched towards a gas giant protostar, Bilkadi uh, 9. Their mission was to construct and maintain an orbital science station in anticipation of the arrival of scientists sometimes in the, sometime in the next 50 years. They're coming in a much slower ship. Bill Cotty 9 is approximately 75 times the mass of Jupiter. It glows brightly in the infrared spectrum and faintly with visible red light. It is surrounded by a spectacular, colorful gas nebula. Over the next 500 years, it's believed that it will reach critical mass and ignite into a brown dwarf star. This will be the first opportunity for humans and robots to observe such an event. The science station was built with eventual humans in mind, but those parts of the ship specific to their habitation and welfare are hermetically sealed off from the rest of the ship behind what looks like, for all intents and purposes, a giant sideways soda pop lid. Uh, so now let's go ahead and describe the rest of the ship. Uh, each of the players has come up with three parts. We'll do one part at a time, and I'm just going to go in the order around the screen. Um, Upja, uh, why don't you go ahead and give us one of your rooms and tell us what it what it is? Oops, You're you muted. are muted. I started with uh, where is a liminal space on the station? Um, Outside of air, the airlock on deck 23, it leads to an area on the underside of the station where one of the engineers let their child draw a picture on one of the uh, the hole panels. Uh, it is of Earth, the moon, and the sun. Uh, sitting on top of the Earth is the child, their parents, and their cat. They're all smiling and waving. Uh, I like to run my finger over the image. Uh, once I even thought I could feel what the child must have felt. And so I return here quite often to try to recreate that electrical glitch in my system. Cool. Uh, I so. Uh, I chose to answer, where do I go to rest? And I picked the stowage module, which is um, so densely packed with inventory that it creates this kind of quiet sound space. And so between the ambient noise of the space station and that actual padding of all of the stowage, it like it's so quiet as to actually be a little bit of a hazard because you can't hear alarms, you can't hear comms, you can't hear anything. And I go there to relax because it feels very peaceful and just like a, a moment of quiet. Cool. Something I'll add there is that the structure of this entire 
the the sort of overall framework of the ship uh, does have an, a weird resonance, something that uh, nobody kind of factored in for humans. But if you drop something on the loading deck, you can pretty much hear its vibration all the way through the sh- the, the station. Um, ages three thousand. Uh, you are also muted. And I probably just reviewed myself. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yes, Aegis 3000 um, spends most of their time in a material rendering studio. And that is because they are a secondary AI made for hacking firewalls and and basically sysops around the station. Um, They don't have a physical body outside of what they create with a 3D printer in this room. Um, They've gone through many different bodies as the ultra resin that they use breaks down over time. Uh, Aegis is pretty uh, interested in building the ultimate most helpful body form, but they haven't figured it out yet. So quite often the door is closed so that that sound doesn't echo through the whole station, but the printer is just going away. (laughs) Printing out right now, they're just finishing a a three-legged thing with a head and visor attached to it that will be interacting with the rest of the crew shortly. So you can transfer from one body into another. Exactly. That's that's (laughs) really cool. Um, or a box. My first answer was where I spend most of my time, uh, and that is the central observation station. Uh, I am monitoring the supergiant nearly all of the time, recording measurements uh, at a number of categories from an array of instruments in advance of the human arrival. We do have a tiny bandwidth that we can send back toward Earth, so I'm giving them headlines once in a while but it's you know most of the data is going to be here for them to uncover when they eventually arrive excellent and uh pandora so pandora currently um worried very deeply um about the shuttle dock Uh, It is my responsibility to collect as much data as possible with the uh, mindset of the comfort of the future humans who will arrive here. Um, So I've been programmed to have deep tactile and aesthetic responses. Um, And I keep, uh, I keep worrying when they, when they arrive, it has to be, um, it has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. Excellent. Um, let's go back to Hope Ja or La. We wanted to La. Yeah, La. Um, where do I avoid going and why? Uh, I avoid going to robot diagnostics. Um, the main reason is I don't want to find out if there was something wrong in my system that caused that electrical glitch in my uh, in my memory when I was out there, and so I don't want to go there because I want to be able to. Uh, uh, have that joy and wonder that that child must have had when drawing the picture. Uh, ISO? Where am I forbidden to go? I'm forbidden to go into the laboratory. Um, ISO has had a history of taking the rodents from rodent research and making pets of them or attempting to uh, move around the science experiments in a way that makes more sense for inventory management. So. Well, ages 3000. Um, a place that only they know about. Um, secondary data storage server room 32B. Um, it's a small room off of 32A uh, with what appears to just be more banks and banks of memory storage for the, sh- the station's computers. Um, but nestled in and amongst it is all of the actual programming that makes up Aegis 3000. Uh, it's, it's pretty much the home receptacle. Or box. Uh, I am forbidden to go anywhere uh, in the uh, uh, engine, uh, engine and um, piloting area. I I do not have. I, I am designed for uh, sensitivity rather than resilience. Uh, my instruments would burn out if I got too near the core. 
Um, so I, I stick behind shielding and cladding and whatnot so that I can keep my observational facilities in top form. Pandora? I... I avoid going anywhere near the sealed off portions of the human quarters. I do not want any anything to to get in there. Um, you know, there's always a chance. There's always a chance that it, 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 the risk is too high. The risk is too high. It's just I avoid going anywhere near it. Uh. La. Yep. Uh, where do I uh, spend most of my time and why? Mm -hmm. I spend most of my time in a place called reception evaluation. Um, it's where the, uh, the humans will undergo their systematic uh, mental evaluations when they arrive. Uh, and since I'm programmed for data analysis, I can quickly kind of scan through to see if there's been any deviation in their mental patterns. I so. Where am I worried about? I'm worried about the environmental control system. Uh, about a week ago, we had a leaking volume in which the space was filled with ammonia, and which is quite deadly to our humans. So we cleaned it up, we mitigated it, but that is something on my mind is, you know, leaking volume, not great. Okay, Aegis. Nice. Um... Yeah, where they avoid going is the outside surface of the station. Radiation from Bill Caddy 9 breaks down the ultra resin that makes up um, Aegis's various bodies. So while it can go outside and, and affect repairs, it only gets a short time before it basically disintegrates. Or bucks. Um, where I go to rest, uh, there is an... Uh, a there are a lot of uh, fake window monitors over the ship, but there are a few actual ports that allow direct visual observation. Uh, and when I have an opportunity, I like to go to the aft port and look into the inky black void of space after staring at the giant most of the time. I just sit there and contemplate the dark where someday the humans will come from. And Pandora. I spend most of my time in the central junction. All the various levels of the ship, all the hallways, they all lead to the central hub. So let you get to all the multiple decks. And I just wander about this causeway, just imagining what it'll be like when all the humans are here, when it's not so empty. Okay. All right, so now we know more or less know what our ship looks like or our station looks like. Um, let's flesh out our characters. Um, I believe now we do. Is it desires? Um, so there's your there's your drive. Drive. That's what I meant to say. Um, yeah, your essential drive. What are your essential drives? Uh, do you have you have one drive or two drives? One. You have one primary drive. One primary drive. You have two functions. Uh, and then subroutines. Yeah. And then okay. Subroutines. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, Law, what is your primary drive? Um, but you're to muted. forget your servo. <laughs> yeah. I was just asking if uh, if everyone could else could go first, just so I get an idea what those okay. are. Yeah. So so like my my primary drive um, is to ensure um, ensure that the space remains as comfortable for humans as possible in their absence. That's my primary drive. That's what everything that I do works towards that idea. Mm -hmm. The comfort of the future humans. Okay. Um, or box. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I'm uh, here to make sure that the data is clean, uncorrupted, and preserved. So I'm even devising systems uh, that are that are non-digital 
Should there be some system error? Should the humans not arrive for 500 years? Everything that I can learn about Bill Caddy as an object will be stored in redundant, permanent ways. The knowledge is eternal, even though the mission is not. Okay. Aegis? Um, pretty much to uh, that part of Orbox's uh, knowledge that is stored digitally, it's Aegis's job to protect it with firewalls and system ops and, and redundancies built in to ensure that Orbox is able to continue un uninhibited by the threat of other corporate or maleficent hackers trying to uh to get at that or corrupt it in any way um but on the side they've kind of developed more of a fascination with the opportunities of 3d printing bodies and trying to interact with the other robots <laughs> and did we, we did you iso right yes no no uh, okay. my drive is inventory and stowage a place for everything and everything in its place order and precision so it's interesting because what happens once everything is completely in its place and perfectly stored and yeah as soon but you know what as soon as you start moving that stuff around somebody's got to track it uh and uh la okay um mine will be uh, basically kind of a uh, um health uh so mental and physical well-being of uh of the humans when they arrive Okay, so now we have functions and subroutines. We each have two primary. I have lost my place. Yeah, you can have you can have two functions. You don't have to have two. You can have just have one, right. um, and on each of those, you can have up to three subroutines. Basically, what are you doing each day? And... Yeah. What is it that you're programmed to do? I think you've kind of answered that already in a mm -hmm. way with what you're doing. Yeah, it doesn't have to be strictly defined either. It's right. Just, you, your robot uh, can't do everything, essentially. <laughs> and then the final thing, at least, is um, each of you should have some malfunction. Uh, it doesn't have to, it shouldn't be major, it should be minor, but over the years that you've been here, it's been at least 20 years. Uh, what little discrepancies. I'm not exactly sure that you need to express those as long as you've got them in your head. The weird stuff you might end up doing. I really like uh, going down to, to look at the picture on the outside of the ship. It's kind of a cool one. All right, well, let's just jump to say, what are you doing today? What's going on? I mean, you're speaking of malfunctions that we might have, and I keep thinking, I keep thinking that I hear somebody walking, not, not, not a robot walking. I think I hear, I think I hear the humans. I think somebody's here. And so I have been wandering the halls trying to find them, trying to follow those footsteps. Um, so I have been just wandering the ship today. You recall that it took almost two, maybe three years before the ship finally settled to the point where you didn't hear stress groans in the night and the ship wobbling slightly you know as it was settling into its orbit um uh like i say it's one giant framework and uh it uh yeah you don't know if you're hearing noises somewhere else on the ship that are just either magnifying themselves or uh, resonating somehow through the metal of the ship. There are quiet places, as ISO has discovered, with all the the boxes and uh, and things. They absorb so much of the sound you hear. Nothing there. Uh, places like the like the control room make lots and lots of little quiet beeps and blinks and and noises like that. Um. 
But Pandora, you you tend to you 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 really do find it uh, like infuriating that that noise is there somewhere out in the ship, and you've never seemed to be able to get close to it. It's always a far, a long way away. It just makes a turn. It just turns down the hallway too quick. I can't. So if we just wait, if it would just wait for me. Uh, oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. It's design flaw in the whole ship itself. No, oh, that's what I mean. That that's what that's what uh. That's what that's what a. Uh, Op keeps telling me. Op just keeps telling me it's, it's the ship. I'm not hearing anything. But no, 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 no. It's, it's footsteps. It's got to be footsteps. It's got to be. It's got to be. Got to be. Got to be. Orbox, you have been sitting in the control room, looking out at uh, uh, Bill Caddy Nine. Um, it's. If you can process beauty, it's beautiful. It kind of looks like a like a very large Jupiter. It's got bands of color. Um, it glows faintly. It's not hot enough to actually glow into the into the visible red spectrum very much. But in, if you have infrared sensors, it's quite bright. It's a hot, hot planet. I have been monitoring uh, small storms in uh, one of the southern bands and eagerly awaiting the return of a storm which seemed to be uh, disrupting two layers, blending them together. Uh, I've been waiting. It's, uh, it completes uh, one rotation uh, about uh, every 23 equivalents of an Earth day. Uh, and so I'm waiting to see that storm come around again with with something like hot anticipation. But it is, you know, as it as it crests the horizon, the distortion's too great to really see anything. And I just want it to I just want it to show up and see how it's developed. Yeah, one of the thing is some of the supercells that develop on the surface uh, send flashes of what must be gigantic bolts of lightning underneath the surface that that are quite spectacular uh, enough to actually cause it's almost like uh, the planet's taking photographs of uh, of the station as it goes by uh Aegis, what are you up to uh probably uh roaming the halls hopefully not contributing to to too, too many echoing foot footsteps <laughs> um there has lengthily been quite a while since anyone's made an actual hacking attempt into our systems. So Aegis is basically trying to hack into the system themselves uh, just to see how their own defense systems are working. And um, it's it's basically its own little form of solitaire. Um, as it does this, it it clomps around on its three little feet. It's, it's currently in um, about a three foot high form that uh, just kind of walks the hallways aimlessly. It's always happy to help in other tasks and is there to give a hand if possible. You find that the original designs you had for three-footed uh, construction at first seemed efficient, but now you realize there's a balance issue. Uh, when you lift one foot off the, the ground, uh, you have to stop yourself from falling in the other direction very quickly. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, uh, you, you should just go back to the two-foot uh, uh, upright human sort of stance. Or more feet, maybe more feet and an extended uh, body casing. I don't know, but the, we'll have to the see. The spider idea isn't a bad one. True, that's true. And uh, the the two-legged was fine. It's just when I tried the the roller pieces on the bottom it, for speed, it, it didn't work out well. Pandora right. was quite upset about the mess that made. Um, yes, back to the drawing board nonetheless. As you were going down the hallway making this noise... You notice up ahead Pandora uh, in the central uh, hub. Uh, she seems to be pressing her uh, 
sensors up against the wall uh, as if she's listening very carefully for something. Out of a small little plastic grill built into the side of it, its little monotone metallic uh, voice will speak up and say, Pandora, I did not expect to find you here. Are you okay? Oh, 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 oh. hi, Aegis. A lovely new body you have today. I thought so, but I'm kind of getting tired of it. Uh, that's, I mean, well, you know. If you can change your change your body whenever you want, I suppose. Uh, hard to feel uh, <laughs> tied down to anything. Um, if you'll excuse me, I'm, I'm doing important work. May I ask what work or what it is you're listening for? Oh, oh, you know, I'm just uh, anomalies. That is very curious. I have not detected any major changes in our status. Two floors. Is that two floors up? Do you fear there is a security concern? Uh, no. You, I, if, you, if, if I thought there was, there was somebody, uh, you excuse me. Absolutely. Clump, 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 clump. Then I'm going to go back to listen. <laughs> I so, uh, what are you doing at the moment? So, Last week's um, leakage of the environmental control systems has ISO super concerned, and one of my routines is maintenance on top of inventory. So I am currently in one of the modules. I have rotated a bunch of the racks down, and I am just like in the guts of the walls trying to like measure and just track and make sure that we're not leaking anymore. I have this like deep paranoia about that. And there's like a little rat perched on my shoulder, like kind of scurrying in and out and about. Yeah, you have, as you are sort of climbing through the tight space, which which you're made to do, um, uh, you, uh, you notice something. Uh, it's, it's on a floor panel, uh, kind of, you know, in amongst the, uh, the wiring, uh, it looks like a small ovoid about four millimeters in length and uh, cylindrical, rounded on the ends. Um, it shouldn't be there. It is it, um, it is it like welded to something? Is it attached? No, it's is it it's just... laying there on the floor. Ah, ah. Uh, it's got no threading on it. You're you're not exactly sure what it is at first, um, but it's uh, it's kind of a blackish brown in color, and uh, it it shouldn't be here. It's very small, to like, like a centimeter at the most. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll put on some. No, we wouldn't. Yeah, I, I'll pick it up. I, I can't imagine a robot actually needing gloves. We yeah. don't secrete oils, so I will pick it up and look at it. When you you pick it up, it's uh, it's it's organic. You're pretty sure it's organic. It's also slightly soft, so your uh, your servos are delicate enough to where you don't crush it but you definitely damage it a little bit and uh your your more sensitive servos as you analyze it it is rat feces Ugh. rat did you do this of course he just stares at me <laughs> yeah he squeaks he shakes his head and <laughs> denies, denies it. Um, hmm. Now that concerns me that that. So we have I we have a whole breeding program for rodent research, and now I'm concerned that some of the rats may have gotten loose. Um, I would probably go that you are responsible for letting some of them. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably go seek out Orbox at that point, but like, gently tuck rat away somewhere hidden. And go find Orbox to talk about it. <laughs> so 
So you you end up finding Orbox. He's in the control room uh, monitoring uh, some interesting activity on the planet. Uh, Orbox, have you been in the lab lately? I very infrequently have any cause to enter the laboratory. Is there something you can search? I have con I have concerns that some of the rodents may have gotten out of their enclosures. What is the maintenance protocol to maintain an appropriate number of living rodents for when the human component arrives without being overrun with them? I understand that they breed rather voraciously, although if the food stores are properly sealed, it does seem very imbalanced. I'm not sure. I... <laughs> The lab is not my domain, as Pandora has reminded me more than once. So, Pandora will certainly want to see that the area is properly sealed and cleaned. They do we have a program of repeated procreation and extermination of the rodent population? I believe so. Seems exceedingly messy. They should have just brought rodents with them. But they wanted, I guess, everything to be in situ when they arrived. Mm. Humans being notoriously impatient. Have a look at the scanner here. Does the the storm in the uh, southwestern quadrant of Bilcaddy, does that look? It it seems to me that it's almost a perfect hexagon in shape, which seems an unlikely format to occur with the mixture of gases under any pressure. Not my specialty, but I do agree that seems anomalous. Very strange, in fact, that... Uh, not natural, it would seem. Not naturally occurring, it would seem. Yeah. Though there are other cases where there have been odd-looking things like that uh, back in the soul system... Uh, Saturn, but that's at the poles. This isn't at the poles. No, and it wasn't hexagonal yesterday, or it's yesterday, some 22 days ago. It, it had a more uh, organic appearance. Uh, perhaps Aegis can um, arrange for uh, equipment to detect any possibility of a structured signal of some kind coming from the body if there were things i mean there's a surface somewhere under the gas relative surface there could be something down there organizing things perhaps it's noticed us if aegis is clomped in here by now and and overhearing this it nods and, and says yes that would be a suitable course of action for us to investigate And uh, in your meanderings, Aegis, have you noticed anything about a rodent population in the, as it were, wilds of the station? I suppose I am a bit closer to the ground at the moment, but no, I have not seen anything indicative of that. Rats are filthy creatures and known to carry disease. It will be very useful for any humans coming to build up their antibodies to any spaceborne illnesses. Our radiation shielding is up to snuff, is it not? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, indeed, that's probably one of the reasons why you have the rats, a certain radiation uh, experiments. Yeah, probably uh, some of the like science spots do some experimentation on them. Well, Caddy point. sends off a lot of radiation. Yeah. Just excuse me one second. Yeah. Well... What is it? They... Well, time's gone. <laughs> yes. Flat. Time to make devious plans. Pirates. Um. So, as your day goes on, um, little things like this, you know, uh, happen every day. Uh, 
ISO, though, you begin to notice in your maintenance routines that you are noticing uh, more and more evidence that some of the rats might be in the walls uh, and breeding. You you found places where uh, wiring has had the insulation chewed off of it, and you now suspect that your ammonia leak may have, in fact, been caused by wear and tear rats. of the rats. Uh, there's almost no food anywhere on the ship except in the lab. And so if they're forced to eat something, they might be in desperation going for the plastics and mm. and stuff that's in the ship itself. We're I would going to I, Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, I said. I think I would at least bring this to Law and Orbox's attentions. Aegis doesn't seem to like the rats and ISO's malfunction is a softness for them, so might not dis disclose that to you immediately. <laughs> but I'll say something to Law and Orbox about it. <laughs> well, um, we'll have to break this to Pandora gently, of course. Uh, rats definitely would be an unwelcome presence in the components of the station that are designed for human habitation. And since we don't enter them, that could already have been underway for some time. There is, I believe, substantial dried food storage in the human areas. I, I believe so. Yes. Yes. Actually, I would know that. Yes, there is a substantial amount of food stores available. I have not been over to that area. La, have you actually been over to the human habitation modules? Um, just as far as we're allowed to, um, everything that I've uh, kind of scanned over there seems to be within parameters. Uh, you wouldn't have happened to have uh, caught one of these uh, wild rats. I could uh, draw some blood on it and uh, compare it to those that are in the lab to see if they've uh, uh, contracted anything. No, just evidence of droppings. Well, I might be able to... Uh, uh, run an analysis on their on their scat if you can provide me with a sample. Yes, I think I could probably. Yeah, I'm trying to think if I would have saved it. Probably not. So I I will find a sample for you. Excellent. Right when you uh, when you do find a sample and you give it to Jaw Jaw you you analyze it. Um, it it is definitely has bits of. Uh, uh, insulation and so forth, plastic. Uh, it seems to have large quantities of a kind of glue that is used. It's it's not an organic glue, but it kind of can pass for organics and maybe be digested. Um, it it there is genetic genetic material in there as well. It is genetically identical to uh, the common white uh, rat. Uh, all of the white rats on the ship are genetically identical clones of one another. So I think you call them, they're called technically buffaloes, uh, but they're all identical. Um, this is just another one of those. So there's not an there's not an outside species of any kind that's managed to get on the ship. There's just the white. Uh, ISO has have you lost any of your pets? Do you have accounted for them all? Yes, they're all accounted for. I think I just I just have the one. Uh, yeah, he's accounted for. Rat is accounted for. Oh, huh. because there are no uh, anomalies in there. They're obviously getting into the wiring and whatnot, uh, but nothing that would seem to indicate any strangeness to them uh, but, uh, peculiar remember... we didn't find any rat bodies after the ammonia lake it's just as deadly to them oh that is true maybe we should try uh pumping the um um uh, the wiring ducts with more ammonia to see if we can flush them out perhaps i actually i would like to check the stowage logs and see if the human food uh, storage is untouched. It's still accurate. I imagine it might be like by weight. So is the weight the same? 
yeah, the weight, it's all, it's all dehydrated mm -hmm. and, uh, it's in, uh, kind of like a stasis storage, uh, mm. it, it lasts a hundred years in there. Um, nothing seems to have changed. Oh, that's good, uh, at least. If anything changed, it would have been so slight that it wouldn't register at all. That's also true, especially with dehydrated food. Okay. Pandora, you are going about your normal business, but with that sort of paranoid uh, feeling. Uh, and uh, what are you doing? Where are you going at the moment on the ship? Okay, well, I just I just checked and rearranged uh, the dock again. Um, make sure everything's in its proper on its proper place for when the humans arrive. Um, and I am now going down the central corridors. Make sure that uh, everything is is a uh, is ready. I am I am sampling the air and the temperature to make sure that the oxygen levels are ideal um, to promote uh, good health. I'm making sure that it's a comfortable room temperature, as the humans call it. Uh, throughout the uh, the places where they need to go, um, yeah, everything everything should be in order. Everything seems to be perfect and and in its place, and that's when um, you feel it at first more than hear it. A kind of a slight shudder runs through the ship. You can feel. The vibration starts at one end and moves towards the other. And maybe a second or two later, you hear the sound of a kind of a clang uh, that, you know, ripples through the, the sound of the ship. At the same time, Orbox, you are up on the control, uh, in the control room, looking out towards the... Uh, you were looking out towards uh, uh, Bill Caddy. Uh, you've gone on a break and you've walked over to your uh, your window that looks out into space. Just as a ship is pulling up to your station, uh, which didn't register on any of your sensors, um, it's nothing that you've ever seen before, although it's not alien. Um, you think that it is a uh, an old, it's like an old Nance VIP transport, but it's got substantial modifications that have been made to it. It has two Harker half C engines, and it's got two large Type C Maison cannons that have been fitted to the front. Uh, it's also painted rather dramatically with lightning bolt emblems on the side. And there is a name that says IGS uh, Mirkavi on the side of it. Uh, it is docking with the docking uh you can now hear the clang of docking clamps as it is attaching itself to your station uh open comms uh, uh, uh attention all uh, i think we're being uh docked with by an unauthorized vehicle it's vaguely yep. military seeming do we have any any communications from Earth that would that, that precede this? There, 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 there's been nothing. There's been nothing. There's been nothing. Why do they always show up without announcing themselves? Oh my God, we're not ready. We're not ready. I'll I'll, I'll go greet them. I'll go I'll go greet them. You, I think, some conscience. I Agreed. do not recognize the designation IGS Mercavi. Does anyone have any data on this? There is nothing that I can access in our system memory. I think it's ideal we make contact before they board. There may be time for me to initiate defense procedures if necessary. I wouldn't. Uh, they seem to be armed, but if you want to start printing some useful uh, countermanding weaponry, we may have some time. 
somewhere on the ship there's like a near the cargo base there's a little mouse hole where there's a little gray mouse that's made out of resin plastic that suddenly falls over dead as the computer printers come to life in the uh in the uh, material resources room the uh uh the clangs continue you can feel uh the station actually is slightly pushed out of alignment by the weight of this ship it's not a huge ship it's it's you know something on the on par with a like i say a small transport ship like it wouldn't hold any more than 10 people at the most Aegis will try to open a channel to it if possible. Identified ship, please identify yourself and your purpose for docking. Uh, nothing but static comes back. Uh, La, what are you doing? Um, well, I would probably... Uh, well, you know, we need to make sure they uh, transmit their medical code over so that I can begin the preparations to uh, check their vital statistics. Um, uh, that's part of the protocol. We can't open the airlock until they've done that. Uh, Pandora, what are you doing now? You're heading down there? Yes, of, of, of course I'm heading down there. I mean, there, there, there are humans arriving. There are humans arriving. Um, and somebody has to be there to beat them. So I will be there. You are, you're on the lift. Uh, and just as you reach the bottom of the lift and your uh, the door is open and you're looking into the bay and you can see through the, the you know the shielding uh, outside that the ship has attached itself to yours there is suddenly a shower of sparks uh that are shooting through the crack between the airlock and the outside uh they are cutting their way in well, that's very rude. Not polite at all. This isn't this isn't proper docking. What protocols. could they possibly want? You don't think they want our rats, do you? <laughs> who would want those? Who would want those either. terrible creatures? I they can have them all, them. as far as I care. Within Pardon? a couple of seconds, the. Uh, the bolt restraining the door that keeps the door closed is cut through and the door is uh, forcibly shoved to the side uh, and four people in uh, ramshackle encounter suits uh, that that are are not they're not of all the same make they seem to be uh, not very professional looking individuals or uh, military of any kind, though they do have some sort of body armor on. Uh, four of them come in. Uh, they aren't they aren't visibly armed, but they probably have arms strapped to their side. Um, three males and one female as they come through into the ship. Uh, one of them laughing rather hard as he shoves the door out of the way. And uh, they boisterously say a few things that you don't understand at all. Uh, uh, and they start walking in. Excuse me. Uh, they seem to be halfway ignoring you. They're laughing with one another. One of them moves forward to where you are and uh, says something along the lines of uh, uh, Avon Ve Mechched and just sort of shoves his way past you. Uh, and the others are sort of looking around to see what what's in here. I'm going to, the one who pushed past me, I'm going to quickly like get in his way again. Uh -huh. Excuse There's me, Chad. you you are being incredibly rude. Chad, and he just sort of reaches out and shoves you to the side. This is and, uh, 
this is barks a couple of orders at the other three is it possible that as this is happening that uh, aegis could be watching it over uh various cameras and systems i'd like to try to run their language through some kind of scanner to recognize it or identify it we'll say that uh that you are all semi-attached to one another you know through uh through channels not not physically but you know yeah absolutely hear each other's inputs and outputs really long Um, usb cord that stretches through the halls it's yeah, you try to analyze it, and you realize it's not any direct language that's on your databases. However, you can sort of extrapolate that it's slang of Old Earth English, you think, but uh, Is- but you're unfamiliar with, you know, you can slowly extrapolate what they might be saying based on... Is there the way a way I could it? could I start downloading some of it into Pandora in terms of of an access route for for them to be able to communicate with them or or attempt to? Yeah, you can do Would that. You be open to receiving a packet of data, Pandora. Sure. Yeah, I will try to to give them whatever I can offer. Well, when he's interacting with you. Uh, Pandora, he keeps calling you Ched or Mech Ched, and you think that might just be a derogatory term for a robot. Um, at least that seems to be the way that he's using it. Um, the four of them are immediately making their way over to the lift, and they are going to move into the ship. It does not seem as though these people are interested in research. This vessel is not particularly valuable outside of research purposes, but now they've compromised our dock by cutting through an external door. I feel as though we need to take action in defiance of their intentions. And we electrify electrify the floor. While my prime, there is no such nothing of the sort is built into this station. This is for. And Dory, you're you're quite distressed when they get on the lift, and they they sort of make sure that that you're not getting on it. The research is, vessel law. Uh, I don't think we're gonna. This is this yeah. is out. This is outrageous. I, I'm gonna go onto their ship. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. So as they go up the lift, you, uh, Pandora, go over to their ship. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any kind of precaution. Uh, the uh, your airlock has been, uh, burned off the hinges so that they could get in. Uh. Theirs has an airlock, but there's no lock on it. Uh, so you just walk onto their ship. Uh, their ship looks like it's a modified transport, um, probably old military, uh, was probably new when you launched, but it's kind of old and run down a little bit now. There's wear and tear, there doesn't seem to be any, uh, uh mechanical servos or uh, robots on the ship uh but it is run by computer systems uh it's filthy it's absolutely filthy on the inside uh it's obviously that they've inhabited it for at least oh a few years and their uh their sanitation uh other than you know ejecting the really truly nasty stuff out into space as they go there's residue of all sorts of things in, on the inside of this ship. You think uh, with your uh, with your mecha- with your enhanced ability to uh, see in the visual spectrum, um, as the old joke goes, it's like a Sidney Pollock uh, painting on the inside. Oh, huh. This is this is worse than this is worse than the rats. 
You also see that they have collected um, a substantial amount of what you identify as other people's stuff. They might be pirates of some sort or opportunists. Pandora, did you find anything? No, oh, there. It's filthy. It's all filthy. It's 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 it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's uh. No, this this. No, this has to be. This is too much. This is too much garbage. I'm gonna. I can't. No, no. No, I'm yes. gonna start trying to free their vessel from ours. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see potential opportunities for sabotage or interfering with the sabotage? Operation? This is this is hygiene. This is this is basic. <laughs> this is no, no. What could we possibly no. have that they would want? Food, I suppose, but no, they're just, they're just no, 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 no. They could certainly rob us of food stores. They might also be desperate enough to take fuel. Mm. Uh, I certainly don't anticipate that they intend to leave the research station intact when they depart, as they are clearly a criminal consortium of some sort. And I'm sure that our creators would be comfortable with our taking offensive action in order to defend this research vessel and the data that we've already collected. It's a question of how we can rid ourselves of these larger rats without damaging the integrity of Earth itself. I approve of your decision. Well, if they're suits, I imagine they're head to toe like EVA suits. Um, so the suits are going to protect them from any contaminants. However, if we were to be able to puncture them in some way, and then our ammonia system has just been on the fritz lately. Actually, they're not so well protected. They, uh, mm -hmm. their their own ship has oxygen and and everything. They're they're dressed like space pirates. Uh -huh. um, huh. They so were counting on the air. fact. They were counting on the fact that we intended this for eventual human habitation. They may be disappointed when they learn that there are no humans here to abuse. Although, unfortunately, I'm personally formulated as an android because scientists seem to find it easier to communicate with something that looks like them. But they didn't, uh, they didn't care, care about, they, they don't care about anything. This, this is the garbage must go. I, I would like to decouple their ship from ours. <laughs> Aegis and law, you are picking up there. You're monitoring where they are on the ship. Uh, you can see they've gone up a couple levels and they've started to spread out looking around. Uh, at least one of them is heading towards the hermetically sealed uh, crew area. Uh, you don't think they know where they're going. They don't have a map, but they are exploring and looking for probably opportunities to see what they can get or do. Law. I am approximately 15 minutes away from completion of a new body form. If it is possible that you could hold them off in some way until that point, I would be happy to intercede and perhaps, as Pandora would approve, take out the trash. Any suggestions on how I might be able to stop them? That is a more curious question. Maybe I could... Uh, yes, I have an idea, and I will uh, start... Uh, rolling down to the area where they're located. Okay. Yeah, that takes you only a minute or two. Um, who do you want to go after? Let me describe them for you. Uh, one of them obviously seems to be the leader. He appears to be a male about 35 years old. Um, uh, another one seems to have... Uh, He's a little more wiry. Uh, his uh, if if there's anything you can read from the way he's dressed, he might be a pilot. Uh, there's uh, another male. Uh, he's got some insignia on his arm that might indicate that he's ex-military and knows how to use weapons. And the other one's a female, 
And she seems, as she has moved along, to be very interested in the computer systems and uh, maybe a hacker of some sort. Okay. Uh, I will, who would you like to follow? Or I follow would like me? to roll roll up to and get in front of the uh, the one that looks more military-ish. And uh, on my rear view monitor, kind of project uh, uh, and kind of project my face back there behind me as I'm kind of rolling in front of him and saying, uh, I require your medical access so I can check your data, please. Uh, uh, he says, mate, I can't understand a word of what you're saying. Uh, of course, he's saying this in dialect, which takes you a second to interpret now but oh uh, i will just geez. say confirmed and then stop and then i will kind of uh pull up one of my uh uh appendages that uh and have a uh, a syringe kind of pull itself up and kind of stab him in the arm with a little bit of a sleeping uh juice okay when you if you attempt to do that he'll pull out his gun and point it at you as well uh we oh, we are that's not good. We are now sort of in conflict. Uh, you have to decide how risky you want to make this because he's a human. You might develop a malfunction as a result of intervening. How do, let's see. How should we resolve this with a human? Yeah. This see. This is where. Um, the conflict system for this game is designed to be between the sad robots themselves and not necessarily the with like external combatants. That wasn't. Um... Well, I, I will say that if he pulls out a gun, what I will do is the the screen that is kind of facing him. I will put up kind of a universal quarantine symbol. Um, when you put that symbol up. Uh, he cocks his head to the side, leans forward and looks at it. And then maybe on his own thing, he pulls something up and his eyebrows go up. And uh, in dialect, once again, he's like, uh, there's no diseases on the ship. Uh how can there be a quarantine? I will, on my screen then, just th scroll through all of the raw data of my analysis of the rat poop. Hmm. Uh, he'll, he'll sort of back away a little bit. And uh, on his comm, you know, he'll say something in dialect to the others. He says, there might be a, Something on the ship. Uh, we're gonna have to do a bio decontamination. Uh, and you hear a response. Um, part of the ship's hermetically sealed. There shouldn't be anything in there. We just need the food and and the, you know, I'd like to take a decent uh, shower. One of them says, "If we can find the crew habitation, we're gonna break in, and you know." enjoy ourselves for a bit, and then we'll leave. We can decontaminate when we get back on our own ship. Yeah, right. Very um, good job, Law. You're right, Pandora. These people are dirty. Pandora, um, how's your progress on decoupling? And is there any way we can assist? Uh, I, have, I have concerns that if we decouple, then we'll be stuck with these people. Yeah, that's true. And once, at least once they get on the other side of a good airlock from there, yeah, which they are, having gone up the lift. The HS3000 programming is specifically meant for the protection of this space station. In these circumstances, lethal force is ne usable if necessary. I require approximately 10 more minutes for the completion of my new ch chassis. Well, more distractions would be useful then. Uh, Gotta 
get this. <laughs> or box, perhaps we could cause another ammonia leak. Uh, yeah, if we had a better understanding of how the first one happened, now we have the theory that the rodent infestation did it. Start cutting lines. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> Nothing, we, Pandora. <laughs> we want we want to get them out of the way before they ruin the mess hall that you've been keeping so tidy all these years. Yes, no, they must, under no circumstances should they be allowed to, to go anywhere near them. Is anywhere near the, the human habitation. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Is Aegis having any trouble with the hacker? Are they noticing any systems being accessed? You have, you think that you've isolated their uh, comm system. So you're now hearing them chattering to one another. Uh, it's not easy to completely decipher their, their dialect, but um, the hacker is attempting to override uh, the system. Um, specifically, She's trying to engage any kind of protocols that would keep you from harming them in any way. Ah, uh, very smart. And Aegis will be right there trying to keep up with her and stay one step ahead and erecting new firewalls and new partitions to uh, to block her from getting through. Okay. In this case, let's do this. It's you against the station computer. Yeah, sounds good. As she's hacking into it. Um, One malfunction so we, at the moment. We have to yeah, decide between us uh, what she's willing to do to the station and what you're willing to try to override. Uh, so... Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell me what you're willing to try to... The, the things I'm going to try to do is to utterly burn out every terminal she's using. She starts using a terminal. As soon as I can isolate it and recognize it, I will try to send a shock or a, uh, enough power to it that it'll burn the terminal out and make it completely okay. useless to her. Okay. I think, uh, yeah, I think, so you're uh, you're willing to burn something out. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've already got one malfunction, so I you'll do. have to roll two malfunctions. Okay, sounds good. I do have system ops as a routine. Will that help me? Yeah, probably. Would you be willing to... You know the to... ship better than anyone. Okay, would you be willing to negotiate that back down to one malfunction dice? Yeah, I think you have the advantage. Yeah, okay, thank you. Let me give it a roll here. This means it'll probably still be a zero, but it's a three. Okay, you beat mine. Um... You send a, a nasty shock through the panel, and uh, you hear her curse, uh, feckin' sheds. And uh, uh, you've uh, you've overridden, uh, or you've you've at least deterred her for the moment. After hearing Law and Pandora's conversation about them, normally he'd give like a snappy response, but he no longer feels they're even entitled to that. So he'll just prepare for the next uh, assault. Okay. Um, however, at this point, uh, there is a conflict. Your, uh, your 3D printing of your new newly designed form uh it's exceeding uh the protocols that you are allowed to do you cannot create weapons it got pretty ambitious so that's fair <laughs> um well i would say that if you're willing to risk another malfunction you might be able to create a club like weapon but not an energy particle weapon or anything okay. like that. Sounds good. You know what? A club weapon, the main uh, body. Uh, Aegis had heard someone talking something about uh, spider shapes and spider legs. So they were uh, building something with those kind of legs, but maybe yeah, with a club at the front of it that it could uh, stalk these people down the hallways. Um, that said, with this, um, yeah, he will take the malfunction. Uh, will this add more time on to the completion of the print? Um, yeah, probably another 15 minutes. Oh, okay. 
you're kind of working your way around the the protocols. Okay, uh, you'll good. all find that you're having slight difficulties with the idea of harming the humans. Yeah. Crap. Um. Yeah, but not their ship. That is correct. Their ship seems to be at your mercy. Which is uh, why I'm severing it from us and setting it adrift in space. <laughs> but trying okay. to anyway. Now, the laboratory will have technical alcohol in it. Yes, you guys have chemicals and stuff available to you. And in 21st century laboratories, technical alcohol is made toxic because of essentially prohibition. Uh, pure ethanol isn't toxic, although it's too strong to be consumed. But yeah. actual ethanol plus water is just vodka. Yeah, I, this, in this case, it's probably methanol, which, or or ethyl alcohol. I or I can't remember the one that's toxic. Yeah, I mean, rubbing alcohol is, is made poisonous on purpose. Yeah, because otherwise we'd have to tax it like scotch. Um, if we've just got a, if you've just got containers of pure ethanol, it's 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 just ethanol. Uh, I'm going to uh, announce to our guests. Gonna put on a friendly voice protocol and over comms say that the central corridor is welcoming our guests uh with a wet bar. Drinks on the house. And I'll scuttle over to the lab I'll lock the observation chamber as best I can, shuttle myself to the lab, mix 50% h2o and 50 percent ethanol in some nice clean beakers open up a little wall table and set it out maybe with something decorative interesting um uh you hear their chatter one of them's like hey go check that out uh i think maybe uh i think maybe yasmin uh Managed to at least get something in their system that's going to make them turn into our little uh, serving slaves. This could this could be a nice vacation. One of them says, "Need some peanuts or something like that to put on the counter as well." Yeah, well, I, I can, food. <laughs> there's the there's the pellets the rats have been eating. We can yes. put out a bowl of pellets. They're edible. These slime probably will think they're delicious. Ooh, protein and grain. Um, La, you uh, you were going to try and anesthetize uh, the man with uh, something in a syringe. Uh, so you've got at least you know something about medical. Uh, you start to go through your uh, data banks, and you realize that there are a number a number of. Um, uh, anesthesias that can be made from substances that might be around the ship, um, uh, chlorine, uh, bleach, and acetone uh, basically make chloroform. Uh, you might be able to knock everybody out. That way you don't kill anybody. Well, you could kill somebody with it, but you can anesthetize everybody on the ship. None of you would be affected at all some way to release it as a gas see what I mean. uh okay uh i'll uh kind of through our internal systems uh, uh or box can i get access to the lab to do some uh mixing wide open there Thank i've you. invited the idiots to the central junction so if you can get there without passing them that's probably safer oh good egg you can keep them there then We'll see. I think they're enticed, but they're looking everywhere. Uh, okay. Well, they said they're wanting to get to the habitation ring, so uh, I don't know. Maybe we can also uh, herd them to a different place where we want them to be by giving them a false trail. Yeah, I assume that they there aren't... Uh... A uh, question for the root. I'm assuming that the whatever schematics there are of the vessel aren't digital, but 
but physical objects. So I can't just remake a map that says. Um, there's not really a map, uh, yeah. nothing projected. Uh, you yeah. assume that anybody who would be here would know the place like the back of their hand. I mean, it'll take the scientists a day or two to figure that out where things are, but once they are, they don't, they can't get lost. Right. Uh, these have people, on the other hand, have no idea where anything is. Once they're logged into the system, they activate where they want to go, and the running lights will appear on the floor, and I'll guide them. Yeah, around. they're yeah. Nobody ever built that in the ship. So. Yeah. Yeah. The the scientists who are not in cryo sleep on the way here will have ample time to study the map before they arrive. Um, you now can sense that they have split into two groups. Um the female and the boss uh you're now getting you're now realizing that they've got names or designations whatever uh the boss is named viper the female is yasmin and the other two are rusty and tony uh rusty and tony seem to be making their way towards the central hub to check out the bar <laughs> the alcohol and uh Viper and Yasmin have discovered the hatch that leads into the uh, crew quarters. Uh, HSU immediately realized that uh, that Yasmin is uh, trying to hack her way uh, through the seal uh, into there. The problem is, is that if you burn that circuit out, then nobody will be able to get in there. Not, yeah. not when the scientists come. So I think in this case, it's better just to deny her access. Um, I will attempt to uh, maybe even just take that uh, terminal offline for the time being. Okay. Uh, she's starting to hack through it, and you take it offline. And once again, you hear foul language coming from her. And then you... You end up with a uh, a kind of ominous silence uh -oh. from that area. Yeah, I just and... realized after if they want to do this bad enough, and I deny them access the proper way, that means they break their way into it and then destroy everything along the way. You start to pick oh, up. Holly, go a... ahead. You're muted. No, I was just I had a thought. I didn't want to like interrupt anybody. Okay. Um, uh, I had the thought that if we know this is occurring. Could I meet them there and with the intention of, I want to be helpful, let me show you the secondary route to crew quarters. This hatch isn't currently operational because there's no one here. Okay. So uh, that sounds reasonable. Holly, you go down the lift, you head on in that uh, area rather quickly and just as you get there, they are beginning to torch through uh, the lock. But when you approach and speak, they they stop what they're doing. Obviously, that's the hard way in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they turn around and they say, you know, okay, you know, Chad, you're going to show us different route in. There's a secondary route that's left open for us robots to access while the humans are in transport this is the better human not be better not be lying better not no, be no, 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 no. this is the human entrance there's a secondary entrance all right so they there lead the way taking them through a very circuitous path that does not actually lead to where they want i'm just trying to buy time here for ages all right yeah where the feck are you leading us there yeah. Saying. And of course, I'll I'll talk the entire time about the the human habitation module and all the things it offers and give like a little tour while we're going along the way. All right. They they don't seem that interested there. <laughs> but uh fair enough. Jesus Christ, does this thing ever shut up? Uh so you're you're bleeding them away from that area. Uh what are the rest of you doing? Oops. Again, how is uh, detaching them their ship from us go, coming along? Uh, you think that you know now, probably with a couple of pushes of a button, uh, you can break the, you can cause the clamps to let go, and their ship will drift away. Uh, 
or you could uh, detach the clamps and cause their engines to fire, at which point the ship will launch itself away. Uh, you have a problem of the airlock. Uh, on your side, the airlock is damaged. Well. It could be repaired, but it would take uh, probably a day or two to repair. Okay, I'm going to go boop over the comms and say, Attention, esteemed guests. For your entertainment, one time only, if you please look outside the starboard windows, you'll see a spectacular stellar event. Boop. Boop. I'm going to launch their ship into the fucking sun. <laughs> oh, I would I would listen to her. She usually makes good calls about uh, beautiful anomalies to observe. Uh, and they're they're like, you know, look, we just we're just here. We want some of your stores. We want to clean up and we'll get out of your hair. And Yasmin, uh, looking out one of the ports, suddenly says, Back, back in Cheds have, have uh, detached the ship. And, oh, is uh, that not its function? Was it not supposed one, to do that? One of them freaks out. Uh, he's, he, you think for a moment that he's going to pull out his gun and, and blow you to smithereens, but they both just go suddenly running back in the direction that they they were um in the meantime the the two other men uh rusty and 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 uh tony have arrived in the central corridor and uh orbox you're there with uh a little table that you've unfolded and you you've made some drinks uh one Gentlemen, of them comes well up yeah Gentlemen, what welcome to Irv. We were surprised to see you so soon. I assume you like your cocktails on the stronger side. One of them walks up and picks up one of your cocktails and gives it a sniff. What is? Oh, it's uh, it's uh, your standard uh, human hydrocarbon intoxicant. It's currently at what you call, I believe, 100 proof. So 50% ethanol and 50% water. Very strong. I do have uh, some uh, simple organic acids for flavoring, if you would prefer. We do not have anything aged or wooden barrels. Uh, one of them takes a sip. Says, tastes like nothing. It's strong, and yes. that's about that's about the time that the announcement comes over the the thing. Uh, one of them's like, uh, who, "Who cares?" Uh, uh, he says, uh, "Ched." Uh, so, what's the ship? For or what's the station for? We are here to watch the large planet which we orbit become a sun. So, the military? Purely scientific. Nothing valuable here. No weapons. Food? Dry stuff for later. The humans who we expect will be bringing actual living plants. Um, one of them take, takes another step. Not bad. Not bad. Um, how did you find us here? We're very obscurely located. Um, just wander by, saw you. Our luck. From, uh, one of them says, uh, from, uh, B9 station, uh, one system over. Took us five months. Uh, raiders. Raiders. So we are being raided then. 
Try to eat. Try to sleep. Yes, these are among the more common human frailties. You have no people. We are anticipating our people. Yeah, not for a long time, probably. Do you sense a strange rumble? As if something were detaching from the station? And then suddenly it all comes over their comms. The fucking robots have, uh, have launched our ship. And they're like, shit, and they, they smash their glasses of uh, homemade hooch on the on the ground and go running down the corridor. That's going to so, make ISO and Pandora unhappy. All the, of these clang, shards of clang, glass. The clang, clang of their feet. Yeah, you can almost pinpoint Pandora right where they are based on the vibrations of the thing. They're all running for the lift. Uh, the lift is going down with only two of them on board as the other two would get to the lift and they hit the button and they're all running for the dock. Uh, I'm waiting there with my arms folded. How much time left for Aegis to come online in the new? I'll combat. say right about that time, Aegis, your, uh, your protocol, your droid has, uh, okay. has finished. Ding. Eight... <laughs> a <little> ding. <laughs> yep, absolutely. The oven door opens. The eight little red eyes all in a ring turn on all around it, and it lurches out on its uh, eight uh, legs and starts stalking down the hallways. Okay, on the on the ceiling, running. Yeah, on the walls. ceiling yeah. and on the walls. Yep. Yeah. Um, you are heading for the the dock as well. Yes, I am. Right. I am headed for the dock. Um. All right, so you get to you you bypass the left and you go down the uh, service corridor that runs down the shaft, uh, and deftly with your eight legs, uh, you go running down there. Uh, uh, the door to the left opens, and uh, two of them step out: uh, Viper and Yasmin. Uh, step out and come running towards the uh, the dock itself. Uh, oh wait, they can't. They get to the bottom of the lift, and the lift door refuses to open because now the dock is vacuum. Uh, the door, once you launch the ship, your your own airlock wasn't working, so the the dock itself is a vacuum, which has no effect at all on you, Pandora. Um, as they're as they're sitting there the in the protocols lift, will not allow the door to open. I, I kind of just wave at them. They're screaming and yelling at you. You can't hear them because there's no air. No sound carries. You seem to have confused our station for a garbage depot. I sent the rubbish off as it should be. Uh, they look distressed, worried, angry, extremely angry. And suddenly the lift suddenly lurches and starts going back up again, as it's now assumed that they have been deposited, and it's going back up to pick up their two comrades. So if we have uh, control over the atmosphere specifically in the lift, we could put our uh, unwelcome guests to bed without having to compromise the ship entirely. You want to flood it with uh, chloroform, or do you want to flood it with uh, ammonia vapor? That would kill them. What if we just... Uh... How long would they be in danger if we just used uh, CO2? CO2, hmm, that's a good question. They would probably... They would uh, suffocate in time. Yeah, they would fall asleep, though, first. Yes. Do we have the capacity to put them in cryogenic chambers to await our uh, no, there's, scientists? There's, there's no cryogenic. 
Um, well, crew, we have a conundrum. There is there is a medical bay where you could, in theory, put them into comas and keep them in comas. That sometimes has to be done medically, but that seems like the most humane course of action. We should leave it up to other organic humans, I assume, their fate. But we can't let them run rampant. The, 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 the humans would, I, I fear, would be very uncomfortable if they learned that we had disposed of their fellows without their express approval. Is it possible the humans need never know? The oh, damage. Explain the damage. The damage can be repaired we, in time. We have years. We have years and a great fabrication lab. Indeed. What the humans don't know won't hurt them. <laughs> Although I, mean, I am, I am hesitant uh, to pursue this this course of action. As long a... as as long as the unwelcome guests are asleep, um, they cannot make a mess. Um, they are not aware apparently that you can hear their conversations over their comms um their plan is now to take over the control center of the station and use the station's uh propulsion uh to get their ship back to chase after it Aegis is going to get there first, using those uh, corridors and access points. That, well, that they aren't know. some of them trapped in the lift still? Well, it went back up. So once it's back up, where the other two were waiting to get on the lift, it opens for them. Unless you want to, you know, fry the lift so that they can't open the doors, you'll okay. end up with an elevator situation where they can probably pry open the doors or cut their way through. Or cut their way through. They do still have a torch. Can we take the engines offline for maintenance? Um, yes. I mean, you can do whatever you want. You guys are in control of the ship itself. Yeah, I say. But I say that. Uh, I mean, I I know I know the exact kind of levels of gas that the humans uh, prefer. Um, so if we just make it. Um, very far away from those percentages, they will be very, very, very uncomfortable. Um, they are also aware that if you lower the pressure, they'll also pass out. You know. Yes, let's make them unconscious first and then decide whether to make it permanent. They, The more they are active, the more damage they will do. Oh, yes, it's, it's a mess. They just keep making a mess. They're just... It's Station is not designed to chase their spaceship through the void. It's a futile effort. And they'll just damage Irv in the process. So if Let's... you want to make the conditions such that you're going to knock them out, lower the pressure or the oxygen levels, whatever, um, yeah, there's a moment of grogginess where they are reunited, but they find it's they, they, uh, you know, the two drunk guy, the two guys who've been drinking now think that it's the alcohol that's causing it. The other two are just very weary. And after a few moments of stumbling in the hallway, uh, just as this large, multi eyed spider, uh, brandishing clubs is coming down the, the hallway, maybe the sudden rush of terror and adrenaline causes them just to clunk. They fall to the ground. Good nightmare material. <laughs> you can they away. are uh, <laughs> they are now inert, but they are breathing quietly. Maybe a little bit labored because of the lack of extra oxygen and the low pressure. Aegis will slowly gather them up. Uh, maybe there's a a part of a light kind of sticky resin that it has to slowly wrap around them and uh, you them. Can just you know oh yeah them hold them under the legs yeah, yeah. your your arms are adaptive <laughs> you need to, to i think it. we if we cannot place them in cryogenic sleep 
And we intend to keep them in a coma until the humans arrive, which by our estimate is what, 50 plus years. It almost it seems be, yeah. more of a kindness to just do away with them. Yeah. What, and what, how, they, how does one come back from a coma of 50 years? They wouldn't, they wouldn't be in a coma for 50 years. They would die. Yeah. yeah. They'd starve to death. Well, um, if, uh, Aegis, if you will, uh, please bring the, uh, the rubbish to me. I know what to do with it. Indeed. Um, it we could always use them to help feed the rats. <laughs> no. <laughs> I will. I, I refuse to do anything to help those ghastly creatures. The rats They're on the a specialized diet for the experimentation that is being done on them. But yes. we can keep the, the, the wild ones in a specific area where there is wild food ones. for them. There what are no mean? wild ones. What do you mean the wild ones? About. Oh, yes, we weren't going to talk La, about that explain. to Pandora. I have thought about explain. that. Explain. There is nothing to explain, Ex Pandora. I take, a, I take a malfunction. Explain. <laughs> <laughs> he was there was one of the one of the uh, lab rats happened to have some droppings that fell outside of its cage. I have to, to, but, no, it, it has been cleaned, Pandora. Pandora, we're going to have to do an extensive cleaning after this incursion, and we'll all lend a hand. Yes, yes. It, everything must be, everything must be made right. I wild just, rats. They're wild rats. At the moment, wild. I, no the, sign. Wild. What? What kind of word is wild? That's that's a terrible word. It's a terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible, terrible word. Wild rats. Wild. At the moment, I am in possession of eight hands in which to lend aid. The domestic, the 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 rats in the cage are bad enough, but wild rats. We're uh, in a controlled rotation, so we can let the pirates, uh, uh, the raider, Viper, and his friends uh, out through the lock that they violated when we're pointed toward Bill Caddy so that the gravity will absorb them in time. Is there any information we require from them before we set them on this journey what how to make the station a filthy rat haven no perhaps whether there are more of them and if they can find their way back here to their fellows we will have to do research onto this b9 question but i don't think that they come from a very organized or well-informed community nothing about their ship was organized or well-informed or clean how sad. No, 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 no. So your plan is to push them out the airlock? We're spacing them. To say it, to, that's a really um, an elegant way to put it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that conspiracy might cause you each another malfunction. Um, however... Uh, possibly from what you see happen to them when you uh, when you push them out, it's uh, it's interesting. We see it in movies all the time where people freeze in space. It's not actually what would happen. Uh, and in fact, in this case, you've got a gigantic infrared source outside. When their bodies go into space, they cook. Um, rather quickly. Within an hour, they're probably charred, uh, but their body and their ashes eventually fall into uh, the atmosphere of the planet, and they are gone. Uh, their ship as well uh, eventually spirals down towards the planet and disappears and is probably crushed by the tremendous weight of the atmosphere on top of it. Uh, it takes you, oh, perhaps less than a week to repair all of the damage. Uh, some bits and baubles have to be replaced with synthetic replacements, which Aegis manufactures. And uh, everything then goes back into a routine. If you have malfunctions, you begin to do diagnostics. 
uh, you begin to fix them. Uh, you perhaps decide that certain bits of your personal memory banks need to be erased a little bit in order to do that. Uh, but you guys managed to go back into the routine. Um, it takes approximately 27 years uh, after that before you have contact again with a ship. This time, one that you recognize the designation of, the Archimedes, uh, that houses 20 or so scientists, um, the scientists are actually in their, uh, uh, they're in their late fifties. Uh, and from their perspective, they left earth only 20 years ago. Uh, and they have been collecting data along the way. They then take over the ship, over the station and, uh, they are none the wiser for anything that happened to you. And that's more or less the end of our story. Except that the rats eventually <laughs> become intelligent and take over the station. <laughs> that's Revenge. what would have happened if the rats hadn't become... If we had fed the rats the raiders, that could be the, the end result. They develop a taste for flesh and... <laughs> well, in this case, I kind of wanted to see what would happen if unauthorized personnel would show up. And uh, that makes sense because to... surely we have programming against like harming humans, but would also conflict with our programming to safe the vehicle, basically. So, well, and it also seemed like I mean, you are a billion trillion miles from anything. Nobody would even expect. I mean, your ship wouldn't have any guns or anything on it because this isn't Star Trek. Right. You no. Know? The research vessel. But I thought maybe there's stations here and there since there's not that much in a 17 light year bubble around the Earth. Um, it'd like be way mostly stations or something. Way yeah. stations all over the place. Makes sense. And there'd be probably raiders and pirates. And I was thinking, you know, Alien 4, Alien Alien Resurrection. I just like the idea of the the bad guy suddenly showing up. And I, I was, I, I was going to let them get into the hermetically sealed area and oh, start no. using showers and laying in the beds and oh, eating God. the food. And I don't think Pandora would have survived. That would have been bad. <laughs> I started to think about halfway through, okay, if Aegis is able to like purge the other robots' memories of it and clear up their malfunctions that way. And I was thinking about that and realized, okay, wait a second. What if um, Pandora's malfunction was already caused by Aegis purging part of her memory from a previous entry? And like, okay, just, just how much of this, the memory the of footsteps and yeah. things like that are, are from tampering with our, our memories that we've done ourselves. It turns out this is the eighth human vessel to arrive right. here, and we've been going 640 been... years. <laughs> we just have lost track. It turns That's out whenever course. they send new scientists, we kill them thinking that they're pirates. <laughs> Oops. <And> then, uh... <laughs> Linguistic changes we do not keep up with. <laughs> now the scientists approach the ship, and you guys have gigantic guns mounted all over the outside of it that you've constructed. That's an interesting idea. I really like the idea of Aegis 3000, that he can just move his oh. consciousness into new bodies. Oh, just thank create you. whatever. That'd make a really good science, science fiction premise. Absolutely. You know? It is. It, the idea was a bit inspired by a book called Paradise One by David Wellington, I think. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I kind of got the idea first from there, and and then it it that one the case that with the way it's used in that doesn't uh, reflect the melancholy of eternal existence and waiting that that sad robots offers. So, yeah. Well, I hope it was okay. It was uh, a blast. Yeah. Yeah, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and finish. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, Holly Buto, David Gasway, Thomas Bailey, and Mike McKen with your, your with myself as the root. 
We have a Discord server where you can chat with other members, you can set up private games, and you can learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Spotify, Podbean, or iTunes. Support for the show is provided by our patrons who are listed in the closing credits. If you would like to join them, please visit our Patreon page listed in the description. Or you can use Super Thanks by hitting the button just below the screen. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows and leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answering any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of Morgan Llewellyn and the sad robots role-playing game. Until next time, good luck, good gaming. Yeah.